Finally, we're getting to the good stuff. Hey, what's up? My name is Aaron and welcome to the Shred Spot. This is where I do all the trials tutorials and today we're talking about the next five trial skills that you should learn. Now, there have been two videos leading up to this one to give you the foundational stuff that you need to get here. So if you're not feeling confident in this stuff in this video, go back to those previous two and lock them in before you come back. Now, what we're gonna talk about today are power moves. And these moves are usually done static or standstill, and they require a little bit more movement with the pedals and using your body to really push the bike in one direction or another. The main reason I'm making videos like this where I talk about these five and the next five is that so many tricks and trials develop on top of one another. So even today, the third trick we're gonna talk about is a combination of the first and the second one that we're gonna talk about. So many of the more advanced skills and trials are just a combination of two or three different techniques that you've already learned as a beginner. Getting these foundational movements locked in is gonna have such a substantial impact on the rest of your riding. It's important to get it dialed in now so as you move forward, it all comes together faster as you grow. The first move we're gonna talk about is the pedal kick, and this is the most foundational of all the five we're gonna get through today. My friend Tim says they're like walking. You need to be able to do them before you can start running with the rest of all the moves you're gonna learn and stuff like that. Really, this move, if you could only learn one trials move, would unlock the most amount of other trials moves. So definitely start with the pedal kick, learn this thing. Let me explain to you what it is, and I'll also link to a video that goes really deep into learning pedal kicks. But a pedal kick is a movement that you do where you're pushing on the pedals really hard, and it's spinning the back wheel, which is giving you power to move in one direction or another. Now, the application of your body and your momentum decides which way the bike goes. You can unlock a side whip, a side hop, a gap. There's so many different things that come from the pedal kick and just that movement of quickly pushing on the pedals to make the bike move. One of the additional things also that will make your pedal kick stronger or faster to get you more power is actually if you get off the bike and you're in the gym doing squats, that will strengthen your legs to a point where you get faster and stronger pedal kicks. One tip for the pedal kick that I find useful is to learn this move on flat ground or on a slow downhill. I did a full tutorial on the pedal kick and taking the back wheel hop out of it will make the whole process a bit easier for you to learn. The usual process goes that you learn to hop on the back wheel and then from the back wheel you learn to pedal kick. But already learning to hop on the back wheel is a pretty challenging skill, especially for a beginner. You can remove that whole element of hopping on the back wheel out of this process and learn pedal kicks outside of it by starting from two wheels on the ground. You can even do it at a slow roll. Dig into that tutorial and really get it locked down, but don't believe that you need to be able to back wheel hop before you pedal kick. You can learn the two totally separate. The other reason to learn the pedal kick on flat ground or on a slow downhill or just from two wheels is that the whole thing allows you to lock in your timing with your pedals and your brakes. That's the most important thing we're driving at here because everything is related to your timing with your pedals and your brakes. So learn that part, that element of the pedal kick is actually what's gonna unlock the most. But all of this stuff is really important and getting your pedal kicks locked before you even move on to these next four is gonna help you out substantially. The next movement is called a lunge. And what this is, is when you put your front wheel somewhere and you dynamically lift the bike and push it forward to that spot. So a lot of times you'll see a rider where they have their front wheel on something and they'll jump and put their back wheel there. Sometimes it's a wheel base gap forward. It's basically not a lot of pedaling, it's lifting the bike up and pushing it into this new location. So you've learned this pedal kick which allows the bike to move in all these different directions. Now you're learning kind of the power part of lifting the bike up and putting it into these new spots. There is a tutorial on the channel already for this move as well. It's called Huge Hops and it really breaks down all the different nuances because there are a few little details that you can do to make the lunge move a lot easier. The one other tip that I would add to my lunge tutorial that's on the channel is using your elbows and your knees when you're riding the bike to over accentuate your movement. So your body is doing all this movement and then the bike is getting pulled with it, but having that bend in your elbows and knees will give you a little bit of suspension and help you create momentum from a standstill to pull the bike into where you want it to land. Also, there's a bit of debate about what this move is actually called and I've seen it called like 50 different things, but on this channel, we refer to this movement as a lunge. Your front wheel is on something, you make this big dynamic movement and you put your back wheel where your front wheel was. That's what I call a lunge. 
This next skill we're gonna talk about is the wedge. And the wedge is a combination of the first skill, the pedal kick, as well as the body movement from the lunge. Think of it as like a forward side hop. You're in a situation where your bike is at a standstill, you crouch back, and then you explode upwards and push the bike forward in front of you in one big movement. Now this one is, you can be in all kinds of different places, right? Your front wheel can be lower than your back wheel. Your front wheel can be jammed into something. There's a lot of different setups that can happen here. But the basic idea is that you're in a static position and you leap forward using a pedal kick and your body movement. So in the wedge technique, your body is preloaded. You're kind of using your body as like a spring and, or a slingshot to get it to move in one direction where you're behind the seat and then all of a sudden as you pedal kick, you're pushing your body into the handlebars to move the bike forward. But the one tip that I would give you as you're learning this is to not just think about the one direction plane of behind the bike and into the handlebars, but also think about moving up when you go with it because you're trying to pull the bike not just forward, but also up in most cases. So think about not just pulling back the slingshot and letting go, but also shooting up with it as well. Now there are a couple different ways to go about doing a wedge and there are a lot of different setups and by the way that you're set up, it can actually change the name of how you refer to it. But typically a wedge is where your front wheel is on something, your back wheel is on something, you pedal kick and you have this big movement to get up onto that thing that's in front of you. So sometimes people will call it a surge if their front wheel is on the ground and their back wheel is on something and you're jumping onto another thing. But I'm just trying to go as basic as I can here to give you the foundational stuff that we can then build upon. So we're progressing here. We're starting to get a lot of the real foundational stuff locked and loaded. And, and all this stuff up to this point has maybe not felt like you're really feeling a massive amount of progression. You're still kind of just scratching the surface. But these next two techniques are where you really start to feel your progression hit. And you're going to progress through these next ones a lot faster as your pedal kick timing gets better, as your body movement over the bike gets stronger. You're really gonna have a better sense of how to do these next two and it's gonna come together a lot faster. So your patience is about to pay off. This next movement we're gonna work on is the gap. Finally, we're gonna get to be able to jump from point A to point B. We've learned every single element that goes into the gap, and now we're gonna put it all together and we're gonna jump from point to point. Now, there are a lot of different ways to learn gaps, but the three ways I would learn it is start on flat ground, just jump from point to point, find cracks on the ground, jump from there to there. Then, gap off of something. Find a curb or a small obstacle to gap off of onto the ground, and then finally, find two points that you can jump between. There's a full gap tutorial on this channel, but I wanted to share a couple other things that I'm thinking about. And when it comes to the actual distance that you're getting to gap, there are a lot of different elements that go into it. And what I'm thinking a lot about is my pedal timing with my brakes. So we've perfected this during the pedal kick movement, but having your timing in place for these gaps is gonna make a huge difference for how far you go or how confident you are doing the gap really hone in on that, getting that takeoff just right. One of the other things we talk about as an element of the gap is lowering the front wheel to actually get more of a snap when it comes to jumping off the ledge that you're going from. So much of the speed and power that come from that first takeoff make a huge difference in how far you can actually gap. So not just how fast you're pedal kicking, but also this movement where you're lowering your front wheel, which is stretching out your arms, which is kind of preloading you for this big snap using your whole bike like a lever to get that back wheel off the edge as fast as possible. Number five on the list and my absolute favorite technique to do is the side hop. This is actually my favorite trick. I just love doing side hops. It feels like magic when you do it. You're balancing next to something and then all of a sudden you're flying through the air up onto it. I don't think there's a better feeling in trials than side hopping and if there is, I haven't found it yet. The side hop movement as it goes, you're balancing in place next to the object you want to jump onto. You bend your body down into the bike, you crank the pedals back, you push on the pedals, you pull up on the handlebars, level the bike out and you're onto an obstacle. It just, it's magic. There's a lot of stuff that comes in all together at one time. It's a very complex and technical movement, but at the core of it, you have the pedal kick and you have this dynamic body movement and the rest kind of comes together. There is definitely a full tutorial that goes deep into this one, but the side hop is the culmination of the last 14 tricks you worked on before this, all coming together. You've got your timing down, you know how to lift the bike off the ground, you know how to pedal kick, 
you'd have brake control. It's just all coming together in this one beautiful trick. The side hop is the last and best trick to learn. The main call out that when we first made the side hop tutorial, people saw a lot of people were side hopping without the pedal kick and amazing if you can get that done. But once you add in the pedal kick, you're gonna have way bigger progress with this movement. A tip for learning a side hop, there's a side whip movement that's very similar, but it doesn't require a lot of height. It's more of a sideways movement, but it's really the same thing as a side hop. You're just moving to the side instead of up. But learning that movement will actually help you a lot with the pedal timing in the side hop with a lot lower consequence. That movement is actually in the pedal kick tutorial that we did and it will be linked below as well. If you're still not feeling 100% confident with the movements we're talking about today, start over here with the trials basics movement. Or if you're crushing it and you really wanna develop that side hop skill, go to this video right here. A massive thank you to the crew on Twitch that joined me this morning while we filmed this. Their insight's been really helpful. If you're not joining us on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Twitch, definitely check it out. Thanks again.